Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Home Coffee Brewing with April. My name is Patrick Rolf and for this video we're in Copenhagen and this is going to be the first of two videos that we do together with T uh, that is showing us first how he's using the April Brewer and later on we're going to do some espresso as well. So um, we're on the inside here in Copenhagen and uh, we're about to brew some coffee, right? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. What's, uh, what's step one? What are we going to do? Yes, uh, I think today we will brew this one, uh, yep. coffee from Rose. Awesome. And the beans from Finca Solidad. Finca Solidad in Ecuador? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so Rose, for those of you that don't know, uh, is based in uh, Zurich in Switzerland. Yes. A good friend of mine and former World Brewers Cup champion, uh, Matt Winton, right? And his team, uh, they do some really good uh, coffee, Stronghold Roasters as well, yes. which I think is, is interesting. It's one of my favorite roast systems these days. Uh, I see you, you have a lot of different coffees up here, right? Uh, yes. What's your main kind of, also from a lot of different places, what's your main thought process when you choose coffee? Like, how do you find all of these different coffees? Uh, some of them are definitely local, for example, like, Local favorite uh, coffee collective, one of the local roastery, and we yeah. will get our day to day uh, espresso beans from them. And when I travel or go to some coffee event, I will also like taste things and see what do I like. And, and if I really like it, I will uh, get some home and do, it, do some experiment by myself. Yeah. And also, for example, this bean is from my sister. Um, yeah, so we will do a Christmas coffee exchange every year. Okay, so yeah. she also brews coffee at home. Yeah, if ah, you okay. visit Vienna, yeah, <laughs> welcome okay. back her. If, if we visit Vienna, she will be in one of these videos. That's awesome. Uh, so this is a, this is a anaerobic natural processed coffee. Is that a let's say a, a processing method that you? prefer or it just happens to be like this so you're you're drinking a wide range or yeah as i say this one is a gift so it's not my personal choice but <laughs> usually i will also pick a lot of uh like fancy processing method yeah. and bring out more like fruity and more floral like more intense flavors yeah uh, that's probably um, usually that, that will feed my okay yeah. yeah i think and i think rose is is, is a good roastery for that, right? I think that they're quite focused on these very expressive coffees, right? Uh, and Pepe here, producer um, in, in Ecuador, uh, I guess all of that is also quite famous for it, right? It's a coffee we see a lot in competitions and, and stuff like that, right? Uh, cool. Where did you actually buy? I don't know, you got this coffee, of course you didn't buy this. <laughs> yes. My bad. Um, awesome. So what's the next step? We know the beans. Yeah. Oh, so actually first step, we should Boil some water. Yes, always takes a bit of time. Yeah. So you have a water and a Chemex carafe there pretty much. Well, what is the, I see you have a bunch of very fancy water minerals. Mm -hmm. uh, I also know you have a water of distilled jug. I'll show you guys. This has actually been featured in our uh, YouTube series quite a few times. Oh, really? In Denmark, this is also kind of my go-to. Yes. You go to a, a store called Matas here in, in Copenhagen and you get this water, which is basically demineralized water. And then you can mix your own minerals in it, right? Yes. Do you know it's RO or distilled? Uh, honestly, I don't know. Okay, yeah. I don't know. It makes a difference though, right? So not all the mineralized water is the same. I think that's quite important yep. to, to kind of note down, right? Yeah. Um, but then I'm assuming you blended your own water. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, Do you want to walk us through how you? Yes. How you did that? I think the major reason is that uh, water in Copenhagen is super hard, uh, like 500 ppm or more. Uh, so when possible, I will make my own water. Um, in the past, uh, I also tried. Uh, Survey water, yep. the little packet of minerals, and also aquacult, mm -hmm. this kind of pre-mixed minerals uh, that you can make a big tank of water. Uh, but recently I got some separate uh, mineral concentrate from Lotus. Uh, yeah, go for it. Yeah, so it's... <clears throat> yeah, so basically the idea is you have uh, like 
droplet pipette, yep. then you adjust the mineral by counting how many drops into the, the water. Into the water. The so you, you measure up like what, a liter of water or something like that, yes. and then you, you choose how many drops from each mineral, right? Yes. Okay. And then I see you have calcium, magnesium, and potassium. Yeah. And this is um, sodium because it's out of stock. So I make okay. my own. You make your own. Okay. Awesome. From sea salt. So I assume it's a little bit higher in yep. magnesium. <laughs> okay. That's really interesting though. And then how do you like, do you, do you know your water recipe now? Like exactly how many drops of each? You uh, use? Yeah. I, I didn't do my own experiment. So okay, sure. Currently, I follow their recipe. They have several recipes on their website. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I pick one is for a filter called Simple and Sweet, simple, which simple and sweet. Yeah. yeah so good. something I would like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, for sure. So I think it's um, roughly equal amount of sodium and potassium, mm. and also both magnesium and calcium are included. Yeah. So. Basically okay. everything. Yeah. Really cool. It's actually something I use myself. Uh, I tend to, my base is kind of uh, this the mineralized water, third wave water, like one of the sachets. Yes. Um, and then I usually work with the magnesium from Lotus to kind oh, okay. of add in afterwards, right? I see. Uh, but, but really interesting. And like making your own water at home is, it's becoming a lot easier, right? Because you yes. have a lot of these companies that are kind of supplying the yep. minerals now, which is really, really interesting. And if you live in a city like Copenhagen, it makes perfect sense because you mm -hmm. don't want to use tap water, right? Yeah. Like for sure not. <laughs> Occasionally I still do because... You do? Yeah. Because Even when you blend your own water? Because when you don't have the mineralized water, ah, true. then also true, you still right? need to drink coffee. It's a little bit more of a logistical hassle, right? Okay, cool. So we we know the water roughly, and you know the reference uh, recipe, and we link that somewhere as well. Uh, we know the coffee we're using. I see, uh, well, I see a lot of grinders, but I see one grinder that I haven't seen um, before, which I think is quite interesting. And okay. from what you tell me, that's the grinder we're going to use, right? Yes. Do you want to walk us through a little bit? What what is this actually? Okay. This grinder is called Momentum. It's from a company called Not a Barista. They, I think they start the Kickstarter project last year yep. and finally delivered the, this grinder a few months ago this year. Mm. So, so I guess it, su successful Kickstarter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the main feature, the, what makes it unique is that it has two bird set inside, one on the top, one at the bottom. And the idea is that you can pre-grind your coffee bean and make it a larger chunk and then it goes to the main grinder and that will change the uh, distribution of your uh, of the grind size. Exactly. Grind size. So, yeah. And I mean, pretty much, and, and you can try this at home as well. You can take, you can grind the dose and then grind the dose again, for example. And yes. effectively, the main thing that you're doing with double grinding would mm -hmm. be to minimize the larger particles in your grind. Yes. That's kind of the, the default, right? Uh, I just never seen a grinder where you actually um, have kind of two bursts in, in the same, right? Especially not a hand grinder. So yeah. I think this is quite interesting. Yeah. Um, do you, like how does it then work? Like what are you gonna choose in terms of grind size and, and things like that? Uh, since it's still pretty new, so um, I don't, I haven't experienced a lot, but okay. maybe, uh, Maybe we can later we can do some separate grind to see how coarse is the top yeah, upper sure. one Definitely. and then yeah. uh, see how coarse is the later one. For sure. But basically, it has two rings that you can adjust. One's more subtle. There's no color. Yep. It's stepwise. Okay, so really easy. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And yeah, and the uh, general is like easily kind of pop up. Yeah. Yep. Super. It also has some uh, extra accessories that, for example, um, you can open the bottom and insert a sieve, metal sieve, <laughs> okay. here. So, sure. after you grind your things, you can you have another magnet cup and sieve your. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, there are two layers. And that's to, is that to take out smaller particles or big particles? Yes, they maybe they have two. They, they come with three 
uh, different size is 400, 600, and 800 micron okay. filter. Yeah. So you can think and uh, you can decide which one you want to filter out. Um, so basically, this grinder kind of has has it all, right? Which yeah. is really interesting. Um, let's let's try it, I guess. You know. Yep. And let's see. So you're gonna then okay. Now you have to set two two bar sets, right? So yeah. What what are we what are we doing? We have number. It's number. So I already the bottom one is I think it's eight tick. Okay. For each major number. Yep. So I already go one round already. That's so why you're on one, because I thought you were grinding really fine, but yeah, you're actually yeah, yeah. going one full circle and yes. then up to one. Okay. Yeah. And then in the top? The top is, it's also like one circle. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you go in one circle on the top and then on the bottom you go in one circle plus one, which is then eight steps extra. Yes. Okay. Cool. How much, uh, how much coffee to water are we going to do? Uh, I will do 12.5 gram of beans okay. to 200 grams of water. Yep. Okay. Why, why 0.5? Okay. Like what, what is that extra 0.5 grams? Yeah. Usually the... it's either 12 or 13, yeah. but this bag is 100 grams, so 12.5 gives you 8 cups. You actually calculate based on the total amount of the bag, <laughs> yeah. which makes perfect sense, uh, actually. That makes perfect sense. Yeah, otherwise it's a very odd number. It is a very odd number, right? and we shouldn't be wasting coffee as well, so I think that makes it makes perfect sense. So 12.5, um, I'm wondering if we can say anything about the roast here. Maybe not. Looks a little bit more developed. Yeah. And uh, maybe, let's see. In a, in a good way, as always, didn't know how to roast coffee. Cool, we're doing some water. Yeah. Um, by now on this channel, we kind of know what this means. Uh, is this mainly because of static for you or also uh, to improve extraction? It's mainly extraction? static. I think for this grinder particularly, maybe because of the two bar set yeah. and extra structural things inside, uh, I feel that it tend to, uh, I mean, if, you, if I don't spray water, then I'll get less beans, uh, less uh, coffee yeah, okay. out. Yeah, yeah, it will just stuck inside somewhere. Uh, so that's not good. Yeah. yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. So. Spray water. That's basically what we're saying. Yeah. 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 This bottle actually comes with the grinder. So ah, okay. I think it's a really Jesus, nice bottle. They thought about everything. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So let's grind it. Cool. So like you're clearly, I mean, you, ha you have um, um, obviously an option now as well, which mm -hmm. I think is more maybe for the espresso, yes. we'll get to that later. I was thinking for filter coffee, did you ever consider to buy an electric grinder or did you always kind of want to do no. hand grinders? Yeah, uh, of course. I mean, before Liz came here, I also use optional for uh, filter. Yep. It's just annoying to, uh, I think you need to go another round to, yeah, to, to go to the filter the setting. Filter and espresso. So yeah, of course. yes, uh, I used to have a fellow old, but due to the voltage difference between US and Europe. So uh, I send it back to my home. Yeah. yeah, unless you have a converter, that's true. Yeah, so yeah, I'm thinking about maybe getting another electric grinder, but okay. I haven't decided which one or yeah. when. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. So far, I'm happy with this one. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to try? Because since I you have a... Why not? <laughs> <laughs> that's the first. Okay, super cool. So I think the main, I mean, a critique towards hand grinders is always, you know, are they, how easy are they to use? Yeah. Uh, how easy are they to maybe to set the grind size? Yeah. Which I kind of like here that it's, um, that it's double. But like the, the numbers makes it really easy, right? Yeah. It's also actually super easy to grind. Yeah. Yeah. I think the build quality of this grinder is actually quite good. Yeah. Yeah, feel, feel nice and you can grind it. It's kind of interesting because then you need to feel Okay, so both bursts kind of quit at the same time-ish. Uh, I don't think so. I think it's still, no, it's already the yeah, yeah, major right, one. But... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Usually I will just knock it a little, little bit little because sometimes some bean will or chunks will stuck in the middle. Yeah, sure. Then I'll knock it down. Okay. If nothing, if everything's good, then it's here and we will brew it with the April glass brewer. Glass 
Hey, for girl. So why why glass? Good question. I think <laughs> uh, last year uh, during Christmas, I sent back sent some Apple copies yep. to my sister ah. and my parents. Yep. And I shipped it back to Taiwan. They missed the pop up, so ah. I want to give them another yeah, try okay, okay. for April. Yeah. So uh, I bought both porcelain and the glass one mm -hmm. because I think my parents may not like plastic brewer with hot oh, water. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. So and I think processing looks more sturdier for shipment. So yeah, I, sure. Yeah. yeah. So and I also like the glass. Yeah. I think it looks looks very. Visually really nice. I think especially when you have a glass surface, it just feels very I don't know, transparent. I, I've always also liked the visual aspect of it. Yes. Cool. And then we have some April paper photos. And then we have the water temperature. It looks like we're sitting at 93 degrees Celsius. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Usually I said somewhere between 90 to 95. Yep. Yep. What do you think is the main difference between the two temperatures? Like 90 90 to 95, like what? Um, depends. I mean, if I change a bean and need more intense flavor or more extraction, I will go for a higher temperature. Uh, but sometimes I, I want it to have a milder uh, cup, then I'll go for lower. Mm. Yep. Okay, sure. Yep. And we um, pre-wet the filter here with hot water. That's something you always always do? Uh, yes, yep. not necessarily hot water. If okay. I start with cold water, I will also, also rinse with cold water. Yep, so fine either way. Yeah. yeah. Super. But, yeah. I think that's mainly for April brewer, but not for like Kalita wave. Yep. Yeah, because if you don't pre it, it will move a little bit when I yeah. start brewing the yeah, yeah, for yeah, sure. brands. Some people say this mechanism can serve as a like knock box kind of uh -huh. knocking okay. kind of thing. <laughs> but, but I think it's fine. I guess the yeah, some vibration. It's not necessary. No, no. Cool, okay. So fairly coarse, coarse yes. I would say, yeah? Yep. Uh, okay. So let's let's, let's, do, it. let's yeah. do it. So 12.5 grams of, of coffee, 93 degrees Celsius water, water you made yourself based on Lotus recipe. Um, go for it. Cool, so 50 grams in your first pour, more yes. or less. What's the, what's the main reasoning for for 50 grams? Yeah, uh, basically, you mean why not 30 or? Yeah, or 100 or? Okay. Uh, could have been it, anything, right? Yeah, yeah, could be anything. I think for 30, it feels a little bit too less. Uh, sometimes if I didn't pull it like correctly or it's blooming, blooming a lot, then mm -hmm. and it, I think it may not wet all the coffees um, sufficiently. Okay. And then up to 100 grams, basically around 35 seconds, um, then you make that second pour, right? Yeah, usually it's 30 seconds, but yeah, I'm hard. talking. I, so. I, 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 I'm distracted. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's always a little bit more difficult too. Yeah, so usually around one minute, I would just pull on the... Yeah, so it's almost like 30, 30. And one minute. It's a little bit of an even interval there. Okay, and now you're going all the way up to 200. Yes. Ah, okay. So 50, 50, 100. How come? How come? How come? Um, I don't think there's no, like, <laughs> like legit reason in okay, terms sure. of testing. Yeah. But, uh, I think I like this workflow, uh, and I think it works for me so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes I, I will adjust the the how do the pulling structure yep. a little bit, uh, but usually I think 50, 50, 100 is uh, like it's simple to to operate. Simple to operate for sure, and it's actually some a kind of recipe that I would do every once in a while as well. 
Um, switching up the pores is always going to give you a slightly different kind of experience taste-wise. Yes. So I think it's uh, it's really helpful in general. Um, so I've been doing it as well. I think especially when you have like this style of processing, you're going to have a slightly faster flow rate mm -hmm. just by default. Yep. Um, and if you do, let's say, the traditional 100-100 that, that we do at April, sometimes it's just too too fast. Yeah. So then dividing it actually gives you more contact time. Yeah. I think dividing it also, let me see, like, if it's blooming, like, the bean has a lot of gas, then yeah. I will, I will probably study a little bit mm -hmm. with the WDT or other tools to help it release the, the gas yep. a little bit more and then do the second pour. Awesome. Yeah, so usually I will wait till 2.30, yep. 2 minutes and 30 seconds, and that's it. That's it. Let's try it, you know? let's see, yeah. let's smell it first maybe. Yeah. Let's see, I always read, did they actually write taste? Ah, here, no. Okay, they do. So it's rich, sweet, red fruits, and dark chocolate. So kind of a simplistic taste description, maybe. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Okay, do you? Yeah, let's go Cups. for it. We can expect, I'm reading from the bag here now, we can expect a rich, bold expression of this natural typica through fermentation. It does smell really sweet. And I see this is, this was roasted. A little bit old? End of November, yeah. pretty much. Uh, so what, that makes it four or five, almost five? Yes. Ish. Let's say four ish, because it's first of April, right? Um, cool. It still has quite a lot of um, aromatics, I have to say. Uh, even for being, let's say, a little bit more of an, um, an older resting. Yep. Cool. So, okay. so we have some Tivenda book cups, or one Tivenda book cup, and then we have yep. a cup that is in Finland. Do you think a lot about which cups you, you use when you're doing coffee? Mm, sometimes. Sometimes. Uh, I think I like this cup, and there's an odd shape a lot. Yep. Yeah. So. Uh, I think I like the thickness of it and also the shape. Mm. Yeah. For this one, it's I also like it. It's like the old school diner, American diner yep, kind of thing. Sure. Yeah. But it's well made. It's also from one of the roaster Goodman roaster mm -hmm. in Taipei and Kyoto. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they make this mug, and yeah. I like it a lot. So. That's also my go-to. Yeah, for sure. Yep. What do we What do we think here now? Like, what are you tasting? Imagine, mm -hmm. like from its description, I would mention that I could probably make it sweeter. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, so you you don't think it's so sweet? It's it's it, there are some sweetness There's like after sure. yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. And but maybe <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, always, I always think that I can probably make it better yep. some way. There's, there's always a way to make it better, always, yeah. which it always should be, right? That's part of the fun with brewing. Um, I think I'm getting a lot of this cacao, cacao sensation out of it. Okay. A little bit almost like um, powdery milk chocolate as well. Okay. In terms of, of the palate. Yeah. Uh, we have this thing in, in Sweden when I grew up, um, that's called Oboi. I'm not sure if you, I know they have it here in Denmark as well. It's basically like a, you can kind of like it's a Milo thing almost. Okay. But it's it's more like chocolatey. Okay. And it tastes quite similar to what this coffee does. Oh really? Um, it's just for me a lot of like chocolate vibe to it, um, or like a cacao husk. Okay. Kind of sensation to it. Interesting. Um, definitely like a little bit ferment notes mm -hmm. to it. 
not too like funky at all. Yeah, like it's still funky. like a quite clean expression of, yes. of the coffee. Um, tastes like Ecuador. Okay. Which I appreciate. <laughs> like it's, it's important that you can taste the, the origin. Yeah. Um, okay. Which is not always easy for a home brewer maybe, but yes. for someone that tried a lot of coffees, then that's becomes a, a factor. Yeah. I hope that I can make that statement one day. <laughs> yeah. But I'm sure you will. Yeah. Basically, that's, that's generally the strengths I would like. It's not too strong, but yeah. like tastes smooth yeah. and a little, bit, a little bit of body. Mm -hmm. and a little bit sweetness and also acidity. Yeah, like, definitely. Yep. I think it's a great balance. It's a great balance structure actually, right? Uh, and I think especially also considering that the coffee is quite well roasted, it mm -hmm. comes out quite flavor intense, right? Yep. It's not the most complex um, coffee, but I think on the bag also they're written quite simplistic flavor notes, yep. which is an indication that it's a quite simple coffee, right? Yep. Um, which is also nice sometimes. It doesn't always have to be like super complex coffee. Yeah. I'm gonna take some more. What would you like, what would be your, let's say your favorite coffee? Do you have like a favorite coffee of all times? All time? From any roaster, any, any, like any, like what, what was the tastiest cup of coffee? Could be brewed by you, could be brewed by someone, it doesn't really matter. Um. I think I have a few experience. I think one of the El Paraiso uh, by now this one. Yep. But one of the also Gisha from mm -hmm. El Paraiso. Yep. That's very like fruity, expressive, expressive, yeah. and that's I think that's something I generally like, and I will want to get more. Um, or, but I don't remember, there's one thing I had in Taiwan and that experience is that I taste the like taste note description mm -hmm. exactly like they say. Yeah. And I think that's a very nice experience that you can really taste what they describe uh, on the menu and which is not always happen. <laughs> no, and I think it's it's for many different reasons. I think it's yeah. the same with with you know bags of coffee when you buy them and you read the taste notes. I think yeah. one taste is is difficult, right? It's subjective. A lot of different people have different opinions, right? Mm -hmm. One person thinks this tastes like strawberry. The other one thinks it tastes like cacao, right? Yeah, it's, it's and it's the same coffee, um, and and no one is necessarily wrong, right? Yeah. Uh, but then obviously you have a style of coffee today. El Paraiso is quite famous for it to like, they do very taste specific flavors, right? Mm -hmm. so it's kind of easier for the consumer, yes. I guess. Um, so yeah, we're starting to have a, a very wide range of different taste experiences, I think, in coffee. Yes. Super, I think this is quite enjoyable, for sure. Yeah. Um, would you like, let's say you were to do another brew, what would you, what would you change if you wanted to change anything? Mm, maybe, maybe I will lower the temperature mm -hmm. a little bit more. Mm. And what do you hope that that will kind of change in the cup? Yeah. Uh, I hope that it will make it a little bit less intense. Yep. Yeah. More rounder. More rounder. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. For sure. I think that the temperature is a is a really important thing to change, right? I think temperature definitely has a big impact, especially on the tactile qualities. Yes. Uh, so to do a little bit of a, like a summary here, right? So 12.5 grams of coffee, mm -hmm. mainly because we had 100 grams of coffee in the <laughs> in the bag, which makes yeah. sense. It's a bit of math. 200 grams of water, uh, pouring three pours. Water you made yourself based on the Lotus recipes, right? Yeah. New hand grinder that we haven't seen, which is kind of cool. I'm sure some of you have seen it as well. So make sure you comment or you know share your thoughts on that grinder as well, because it's always interesting when we see a new grinder. Um, glass brewer, glass server, pretty simple. Um, temperature was 93 degrees ish, and you kind of wanted to go a little bit lower to get a bit more of a rounder sensation, yeah. right? Or maybe I'll increase the coffee to water ratio. Yeah, okay. Now it's 
uh, 1 to 16. Yep. Yeah. So maybe to 1 to 17. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So actually go down maybe to a, a telegram dose or a little bit lower. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's always a lot of things you can do, right? And we're always super uh, interested also to hear your thoughts on it. So if you have any, maybe any recommendations on what you would do on that cup, you're more than welcome to kind of write and comment that. Um, great. Uh, you and me actually have a second video to do uh, here today as well. We're going to do an espresso video together. So I think that's a great time to kind of wrap this first video, part one. Okay. Up. Um, thank you very much for, for letting us be here in the first place. Yes, thank we'll you. stay a bit longer for that espresso video. Uh, and thank to all of you for watching. Uh, as per usual, especially this video, you've seen a lot of new stuff, a lot of water mixing. I know you guys are doing it as well. We've seen a new grinder we haven't seen before. Some coffee from Rose, which is always cool in Switzerland. Um, always just share your thoughts, your perspectives on this. We're always really interested to hear it. Uh, and as always, thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe and share and, and all of this, right? Um, and with that, we just want to say thank you again and thank you to all of you and have a good day. We want to give a special thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. It's because of you that we are able to continue to make these videos. And we want you all to feel free to always come with suggestions and ideas on the content that you want to see uh, because we are doing this for you and because of you. Thank you from all of us here at April.